Hello YouTubers and welcome to my review of the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition, the most sophisticated GoPro model to date, but also the precursor to the inevitable GoPro Hero 4 Plus. This is my first action camera of any kind, so I'm very excited to be conducting this review. This review will focus mostly on features and specifications, not so much the quality of video recording, but I do have two videos of me using the GoPro on my channel. The first is a high frame rate video recording, and the second is a GoPro in action video. So if you want to see either of these videos, just click on either of the two videos playing within this video on screen to go to either one. Now before I dive too deeply into this review, I want to show the unboxing that I did several months ago just to see the accessories that come with the GoPro out of the box. Hey what's going on YouTube? Welcome to my unboxing, the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition. One of the new GoPro Hero models for 2014 and I'm very excited to bring you this unboxing because this will be my first GoPro camera. One of the new features of this camera is you can capture 4K video at 30 frames per second and that's a feature that I'm pretty sure I will never use because I don't have a 4K display right now. But it can also do 1080p at 120 frames per second. It has a whole lot of other connectivity features that make sharing videos a lot easier. But I'm going to talk more about those features once I get more experience with the camera. So let's go ahead and unpack the GoPro. Inside the box you get mounting adapters I believe, mounting, mounting, a mini USB charging cable, another faceplate, a battery, instruction manual, stickers, safety information, warranty information, and yeah, so that's all in the bottom of the cardboard box. So now let's break into the top half with the actual camera. Here's the camera already in its housing and how do you turn this on? Is this the on button? I apologize, I'm a GoPro noob, I don't know how any of this works. The Hero 4 Black Edition is one performance tier above the Silver Edition in that it can record 4K video at 30 frames per second and 1080p video at 120 frames per second whereas the Silver Edition can only do 4K at 15 frames per second and 1080p at 60 frames per second but one major advantage of the Silver Edition over the Black Edition is the integrated touchscreen that you have to buy an accessory for if you want to use the touchscreen on the Black Edition. But there are no shortage of accessories for the GoPro. The GoPro series of cameras has the largest aftermarket that is so large in the world of action cameras that many other camera competitors have decided to make their cameras compatible with GoPro accessories. So that just speaks volumes about how many accessories there are available for the GoPro series of cameras. There's even accessories that allow you to attach your camera to a weapon Picatinny rail. To turn on the camera, just hold down the power button on the front of the camera. And you'll hear a series of beeps. You can see the front LCD screen is already set to video capture mode and we're in widescreen. It's set to record at 1080p 30 frames per second. There are 21 total videos on the SD card and we have about an hour and 19 minutes of battery life left. To start recording, just hit the button up top. See the blinking light as confirmation. Stop recording. Press the button and you'll hear a series of beeps. Those beeps are very audible even during activity. On the side you have a settings button which allows you to set whatever settings you want. So within this video mode, if we press the mode button, 
it'll cycle the options downward. But there is no way to scroll upward, so you just have to keep going down until you get to the setting that you want. So in this video mode, we're at 1080 resolution right now. If I want to change the resolution, I gotta press the button up top. 960p, okay, 720. Let's go to 4K, okay. Cycle so down if I want to do 4K 15 or uh, 4K 24 FPS rather, then just uh, choose the option. Um, but yeah, field of view, wide, regular or narrow. It can only do wide for 4K, I suppose. But let me go back to uh, 1080p so I can show you the additional field of view setting. So uh, 1080p, okay. 30 frames per second. Now let's go to uh, 90. Okay, field of view, or no, that's rather uh, low light. And there are a bunch of other options, but field of view, you change that to narrow, wide. Yep, there we go. To cycle between the different settings, you just press the mode button in front. Then you can go into single capture or burst mode. Then this is setup mode. I'm going to press the settings tab to show you the options that you have. You can turn on the Wi-Fi and all these other settings that I'll show you once I attach the touchscreen. It connects through a tab here, locks it into place, goes in via the connectors. All right, so it's a little bright. So, yeah, you can see what you're capturing in video mode. Go into setup, see if I can turn down the brightness of the screen. Okay, well, touch display. See if one minute, all right, I'm gonna lower the brightness of the touch screen. All right, there you go, now you can see a lot better. So these are options for the touch screen. So I'm going to show you Wi-Fi in a second. I said that already. So orientation of default mode. I have to set the video. Yeah. Quick capture. Nope. Four LEDs. Sure. Beeps. 100%. Okay. On screen display. Sure. Auto off. Never. Absolutely never. I never set my GoPro to auto off. Then you can reset all the cameras. So yeah. And from here you can cycle through everything that I just showed you. You don't have to press the button up front if you don't want to. So this is burst capture mode. But what's also awesome about the screen is that you can see everything that you've already captured. So this is a photo that I took at my uh, shooting club picnic. Yeah, so yeah, you can cycle through the videos that you've recorded and stuff. So the touch screen I think is a valuable addition if you don't want to use the application I'm going to show you the GoPro app right now. I have to take this camera off to show you the GoPro app in action. So I'm going to switch to a different phone camera. To connect your GoPro to your wireless app, you have to, first of all, obviously enable Wi-Fi. And if Wi-Fi is enabled, you're going to see blinking lights here that blink blue. And just choose an existing connection. And it's going to search for the app to pair. Here's the GoPro app. Now your phone sees everything your camera does, even without the touch screen. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to keep the phone here. Yeah, I'm going to keep the phone focused on the camera and just pan the camera around. So, oh, wait, camera within the camera. Oh gosh, it's like Inception, almost. Um, oh gosh, yeah. Uh, can't get the alignment perfect with the cell phone camera recording and no back screen. I wonder if we can do that, camera within the camera. So, yeah. Oh, okay. We, uh... Oh, well, now it's recording. Yep, there we go. Now it's recording, so camera within, cameras within, cameras. Um, 
yeah, so that's what happens if you try to record what you're recording. Um, so I'm going to keep the camera focus on the app and I'm going to just pan the GoPro around. So yeah, you can see what all is going on around here. Imagine it'd be a pretty cool selfie tool. Oh, hi. Yeah, so I'm going to stop recording. There's the beep indicating stop recording. And other things you can do on this app are very cool. You can see what else is on your camera. Um, Why well, no internet connection? It just dropped out temporarily. But yeah, you can also cycle through your video. So if you don't want to buy the touchscreen, you can just depend on the GoPro app. You don't need touchscreen to use the GoPro app. One accessory that I think is going to be critical for most people's GoPro uses is getting an extended battery backpack and it locks into place on your GoPro the same way that the touchscreen does. And this can add several hours to your GoPro's battery life. By default, the GoPro only has about an hour and a half without Wi-Fi recording 1080p and that's just not enough for a day out in the field. So an extended battery could help or if you just get extra batteries that go into here. Well, let me show you where the uh, battery goes into. This is where the GoPro regular battery is. And my GoPro is still on because it's powered by the external battery. But old generation GoPro batteries are not compatible with the new generation GoPro batteries. And this is where the SD card goes in. Let me turn off the light. Or, oh wait, it wasn't recording. Now it is, okay. Let me stop recording. Okay, so this is where the SD card goes in. And it's important that you get a class 10 high quality SD card. GoPro has a list of recommended brands to use. I originally got a 64 gig SD card off of eBay for quite cheap. And it couldn't keep up with the write speed of the GoPro, so it ended up corrupting a lot. So to avoid losing valuable footage, be sure to get a high quality SD card, class 10 or higher. Um, is there higher than class 10? I don't know. But this is how your GoPro mounts to accessories. Your housing is going to be the gateway to attaching your GoPro to other accessories. Normally, you don't get an extended housing to use with the battery pack. The housing just cuts off right here. But I have an extended housing so that I can use the GoPro with the touchscreen and the extended battery pack. You clip it into place like that, but battery's not on, so there's a lot of extra space. Here we go, I'm gonna put the battery on. Now attach it in. Sorry for struggling. There you go. And this is an open back, so that I can use it with the touch screen. So it's obviously not waterproof. This is a waterproof one. But use these screws to mount it into whatever you want to mount it into. So I'm gonna put this on the head strap. Oh wait, it's not aligned. There you go. Align it that way. And thread it in in the GoPro is mounted. And I have two of these mounting screws because you have to move the GoPro out farther if you're using an extended backpack to be able to get the full degree of rotation. Otherwise, you're just going to be pointing at the ground. So that's why I have two of these mounting, mounting screws. Um, I'm not particularly fond of this mounting method, but it is what it is. GoPro mounts are by far the most common aftermarket type of mounting accessories. So that's how GoPro cameras mount to anything else. And there's also this mount. It's a helmet mount. This is an, adhe an adhesive uh, that you stick onto your helmet. So that's how GoPro cameras mount 
Now that I've talked about the camera's individual features, I want to talk about the camera as a whole, my experiences, and whether I think the camera is worth its very hefty price tag or whether you're going to be better off going with one of the value-oriented GoPro alternatives. The GoPro is tiny, it's unobstructive, weighs almost nothing. This is what it looks like next to a 5.56 round. And on the other hand, 7.62x54R round, which is the largest caliber that I shoot at the moment. The men who fought in World War II were much menlier men than we are, what with their open irons compared to us with our EOTex and Picatinny weapon attachments. Um, but moving on, the GoPro really allows you to capture experiences that you wouldn't be able to capture otherwise. I use this Go, uh, for tactical shooting practices and going forward I'm going to be using this for more tactical shooting matches to give a first person view of where I am on the course. The camera has so many features that I'm probably not going to take full advantage of. I'm definitely not going to be recording at 4K. 4K is less than 5% of the current market share. If I'm off, please by all means correct me, but I do think that um, for computer media and TV media, 4K is less than 5% of the market share. 120 FPS, I mean, it was fun to mess around with, but it's not really practical to record with all the time. I think I'm going to record in 60 frames per second, 1080p going forward now that YouTube supports 60 frames per second. Editing the videos in Sony Vegas is kind of rough. GoPro does have its own editing software that I haven't used yet. I do think that the GoPro software is going to make my Sony Vegas editing experience a lot more comfortable. But as I mentioned previously about the GoPro having so many features that I'm not going to take advantage of, I do think most consumers will be better off getting the silver edition of the GoPro, especially if you don't need 4K recording. Silver edition can do... Can do almost everything that the black edition does and comes in at a lower price point as well as having an integrated touchscreen but gopro cameras by themselves i think are more oriented for the prosumer tier as opposed to just the entry level consumer tier if you're thinking of using gopro just to share videos with family and friends and you know document a kayaking trip or an excursion of some kind then i do think no, there are better value-oriented alternatives. If you do look on eBay, there are literally thousands of used GoPros across a lot of different generations because what usually ends up happening is people go on one trip that they need their GoPro for and it just ends up sitting on their shelf unused for anything at all. If you are interested in a GoPro camera specifically, then I think you need to know of at least six times within the next year, right off the top of your head, like you can list the exact six times that you will need a GoPro camera for before you invest the capital in getting a GoPro camera. Because otherwise, for most people, it's just going to end up sitting there like all of the people who have put their used GoPros up on eBay. So, in summary, I do think that the GoPro is more for the semi-professional prosumer tier content creator to really create semi-professional damn it i'm being really repetitive uh, but to pr create semi-professional content that you want to monetize if you have a youtube channel or a blog that you get some kind of income for then the gopro is definitely going to help you with that but you know i do think that the GoPro Silver Edition or one of the many other entry level cameras will be good for just like, you know, to mess around with on, you know, the few times out of the year that you might use it. But if you are a content creator and you can think of six times off of the top of your head that you're going to need a GoPro camera within the next year, then definitely the GoPro will be a good value with its aftermarket support, with its software and with this phone application, you really can't go wrong with choosing to use a GoPro camera. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you for bearing with me through any bits of incoherence I may have had. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe this video. My name is David and see you next video.